Today, let's assemble a windmill. So one of the easiest things to do is hang the windmill from an overhead hoist. So if you have a rafter or even a tree or something that you can hang the windmill from to put it all together, that's a great way to start. So the very first thing we're gonna do is go over the individual parts of the furling system. So let's take a look at those. Start by gathering all the pieces for the furl assembly and make sure you remove excessive galvanizing and paint from all the joints that connect. It's imperative that the joints fit well. Here's an important tip. Now, on the furl assembly here, you see these two mushroom heads. Now, we've put those together and we've cleaned off all the rough spots on them, but when we put it together, inside of the piece it connects to, there's a little tiny lip that sticks up just in one little corner. That holds it together while you're putting it together. In the air, there's pressure pushing up. So this doesn't really have a lot of force on it. So you hang on it like this. Now don't try to force this into that hole or you'll break off that little lip. It's only here for assembly. So roll it into the mushroom head. Be extra careful about that. So it'll save you a lot of pain if you remember this tip. I think everybody I've met has a different way to put a windmill together. I like to start with the tail buffer assembly. So I'll slide it into this hole. I'll take the tail pin. Now this is hooked on to the tail bone when it is shipped. So you take it off, you slide it through the top hole, give it a little wiggle. There she goes, she'll fit in there. And then we'll just roll that down, keeping the nut on top to protect the threads. Now we have the tail pin in. Now this piece will hook onto the tail bone. If it's off twisted or something, now's the time to take it and twist it so it's parallel. So we have our tail buffer assembly in. Now it's always a lot easier to do this with two people, but let's give it a try. We're going to put the tail casting on and the tail bone assembly. So the tail casting with the bell in towards the motor, making sure that this bell in is on this side of the center line of the mass pipe. So we'll just slip it on like that onto the tail pin. Let's push this tail pin down so there's just a few threads sticking up here. And let's try and see if we can get this tailbone on by ourselves. Now, the tailbone is gonna have the holes for the spring up. Slip it over the tail pin, lift it up. These holes are up, so we know we're correct. Let's see if we can get it to catch over there. There she is, she's over the tail pin. We'll push the tail pin up. The casting hits there. The tail buffer assembly is on this side of the piece, so it hooks in. There we go. We have the tail assembly connected on correctly. So I raised the motor up a little higher so you can see it a little better. Now, let's put on the brake assembly here, the 786. Now, before we put it on, let's push it up all the way against the top of the motor. Now, if there's paint on here, if this is tight fit, fix it now or it's gonna cause you a problem later on. So all the way to the top, nice and loose, looks good. So remember we talked about this, the mushroom heads. So let's look at that again. So we're gonna roll it in. There she goes, she's in on that side. Let's do the same thing here. Roll that piece in, connected. And then she's going to slide right up onto this pin on the motor. Now, don't try to put the carter key in yet. Just use a drift or something to hold it together while you're working on it. So there you go. We only have one more piece to do and we're set. Let's put the linkage assembly on. Now, it's easy for this little piece to get bent during shipping or maybe when you're messing around putting it together, you get it off. So this takes a little bit of adjustment as it goes on. So we put it with the hook up on the tailbone side here. There she goes. And remember we put this pin in here so we could remove it. So we'll take it out, we'll slide it over, and we'll line this up. Now look, it's a little bound up. Not bad, but a little bit. A little stiffer than we wanted. So let's take a look at it. It looks like maybe we need to twist this just a little bit. So we'll take it back off again. We'll put a wrench on it and we'll just finesse it just a tiny bit back and forth until we feel comfortable with it. So let's take a break and do that. 
we made a few adjustments to our linkage, just eyeballing it in, nothing special. And then I put a lot of grease on it. That helps us with the assembly. So we'll start here. This is going up. This is going down. Yeah, feels good. Now, it doesn't matter if you flip this over one end or the other to see how it fits. Now, remember, we put the drift in here. Pull that out. Slip that brake assembly down. Fit in both sides. Looking good. Line her up. Lift it in. Oh, she's just a little sticky right there. A little caught. There she went. And let's pull that tail assembly and wiggle it. Okay, we'll make sure that this is on that side when we tighten it up. There we go. We have it all put together. So let's put the Carter keys in here, here, and here. And then we'll put a bolt into the tail buffer. So we have our linkage on. I put a bolt through the tail buffer into the tail bone. Now you can see how this is on this side of the tail bone. We're making sure this lower piece, cast piece, is on this side of the tailbone also. And then I went ahead and put the tail hook on. If you can't find the tail hook assembly, it is inside the box with the oil. That way you don't lose it. So I put a little grease on it and thread it into the back of the motor. Now I want to make sure that this piece doesn't rub on this piece. If it does, just put a pry bar in there and give it a little gentle nudge up. It'll bend that right up. So here we go. Everything's looking good so far. So now let's put the tail spring on. Let's go ahead and put our tail spring on. Now this tail spring's been painted, so it's a little stiff. So yeah, we'll work it over a little bit, break some of that paint. So the big hook on this end will go into the first hole closest to the motor. And then this is going to go onto the tail hook assembly. So I'll grab the front of the molder, just sort of pull on it with my chest, <coughs> pop it in there. There she is. Now, on a big windmill, the 12 footers and such, you can't pull that tail spring. You need to do a little counterbalance. So what we do is we put the wheel on and then we use a ratchet strap to pull and compress the tail buffer and hook that on. But on the eights and tens, you can do it. it just takes a little bit of effort. Double check that you've tightened the top and bottom nuts and bolts on the tail pin and then look over your assembly. Everything should look as shown in the photos on the screen. Double check those Carter keys on the linky germ and check out texaswindmills.com for more helpful videos and up-to-date prices on your Texas windmill.